is a lottery lobster. I've never actually seen one myself. This is pretty crazy. Holy. Check that out. That's a beauty. What is it? It's a tag. I don't know. I've never seen it. A phone number on it. I've heard of these before, actually. I think they're part of a... It's a tagging program. They do offshore lobsters. They got numbers, information on it, a phone number you can call. The state of Maine does it to track them. And this lobster could be worth more than the rest of the lobsters that we catch on this whole trip. It could be worth up to $4,500. We're going to call the phone number later and get some information on it and get our name in the lottery. All right, I had kind of given up hope on a part two to this video. Turns out I had the wrong number the whole time. That's why I never got through. But thanks to the power of social media, the people in charge of this tagging program actually saw the video and reached out to me. So I got a message. I got the correct phone number. We're going to give them a call now and figure out the story behind this lobster, how far it's traveled, how long it's taken to do so, and maybe find out if we won some money also. I know that there's some value in some of these tag programs, uh, some more than others. Don't know. This is a wild scratch off ticket, but we're going to give him a call. Let's see what happens. Hello? Hey, Emily. Hi. Hey, it's Jacob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm glad I finally got in touch with you. I, I had lost hope. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to reach you, but it's cool to see the power of social media put us in touch. So uh, I sent you the, the information on the tag already. Uh, you got the numbers and I suspect that you have some information on where the lobster was released and when? I do. So the lobster that you found was tagged in St. Martin's, New Brunswick on November 29th of 2022. November 29th, holy, that's an old old tag. And St. Martin, I don't know where that is exactly. That's, that's way up in the Bay of Fundy, right? That is the upper Bay of Fundy, yes it is. Wow, so it's traveled a long ways. We don't know exactly how far it traveled. We have to measure this in displacement because we don't know what route the lobster took to get to you. Right. But the minimum amount of distance it would have traveled is 256 kilometers assuming or 138 it... nautical miles. Wow, and that's assuming it was a straight line? That's assuming it was a straight line and that would have been over 421 days. That's insane. That is really we cool. We know it was possible, but What's... we weren't expecting one to get called in from that far. Ha is this one of the farther ones that you've had reported or, or, or are there other similar cases? All of our tags that are being called in have been in the Bay of Fundy, so you're the first one that is outside. You've made it outside. That's pretty crazy. That's a long ways. I, I always knew they traveled. I'd heard stories of, of people picking them up all the way down to like Cape Cod and stuff, ones, ones that were marked here. Um, I, I guess this is my first experience with them coming from that far inside of Bay of Fundy. That's pretty wild. I wasn't expecting it when I saw your video online. <laughs> it's so cool that you came across it. It took me a minute to realize that was my tag. That's so cool. So, is I, I thought it was a main tag, because I, I think that Main DMR has a similar program, I'm not sure, and, and I think that that one, um, I don't know if yours is similar, I haven't, I haven't looked it up, but is, is there a monetary value to some of these tags as well, like a, like a lottery system, I think Maine does? We're actually doing kind of a different study. So we're looking to age lobsters. So right now, there's no method to age a lobster. Okay. When we try to age a tree, we would cut it in half and count the rings, mm -hmm. which you can do with any animal with hard parts. So even with humans and their bones, when you have a lobster that molts, it molts everything that's hard. Interesting. So what we do is we actually take a tissue sample from the lobster and we release it back into the wild so uh -huh. that it can age naturally. And when we tagged that lobster, it was a non-legal lobster in Canada. So it was 78 millimeters carapace length. So it had time to go and grow. If you were in lobster area 36, you would have been able to sell that lobster back to us for above short price. I gotcha, okay. So that tag is able to stay with the lobster after the molt, obviously. So the the tags are designed, they can molt right over the tags. Cool. That's like I was wondering how it. I mean, this was 22, so it's been over four, over two years now. So I was like, it had to have shed. But so it, it was actually a legal keeper here as well. But we gave her a notch and, and let her go. So hopefully she'll turn up somewhere else again. So we're hoping that if people do catch our lobsters outside of Area 36, because we can't drive down to you and just buy a lobster, right? That they take a picture of the lobster with a gauge. Okay. And send it to us so we can figure out how much they've been growing. And we actually used your video, and we're doing it right now, to see if we can determine what that size lobster was. So is, is keeping it, keeping them and returning them to you an important part of your pro to the success of your process? So for the aging study, it absolutely is. Gotcha. But because it's 
so much data. We tagged almost 3,000 lobsters. So because you sent coordinates, I can also use that information to help my own study. My study is looking at the migration patterns in the Bay of Fundy of lobsters. So I tag them with satellite tags that get information on depth and temperature every hour. I put them on usually in October, November, depending when the season opens, and they stay on until the until August 10th. And they actually pop off the animal and float to transmit all the data. That's cool. And from the depth and temperature, I can tell exactly where they went through an individual-based model that we use. Wow, that's really cool. Is that a newer program, or has is, is that been around for a little bit? These haven't really been used on crustaceans very much. They're mostly used on larger animals like sturgeon, yep. uh, sometimes on tuna. So because our animals don't come to the surface, it's kind of a strange waiting period for me throughout the year. Where right. I just don't get data back until August. So, so when when they pop up and hit the surface, it instantly sends you the data, or you got to recover you got to recover it drifting in the ocean. It actually instantly sends me the data. Nice. So it'll keep transmitting all the data to my computer until I stop it. And we've had some lobsters travel over two hundred kilometers for their migration so far, just up the Bay of Fundy. That's really cool. And we've actually had quite a few of these tags because when they pop off, they float around, and we have a lot of them go down to Maine. So yep. I've met a few fishers from Maine now at the Walmart in Calais to that picked them up. Yeah, to get my tags back. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really cool. Well, um, that's it's a really cool program. It's always fascinating to hear about where lobsters, how far they travel, because you picture them not really traveling much, but that's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the Bay of Fundy, because of the storms we get, yep. you can see how quickly they leave when the storms start coming through. Oh, really? Cool. They don't do well with temperature changes, so a lot of this is like a temperature-based movement. Yep. And here, because the tides are so big, we get a lot of quick temperature changes. So, so you can kind of track them trying to chase that, that steady water temperature? The lobsters need different temperatures at different times of the year, especially if they have eggs. So one of the other things I can do is I actually take a sample of their eggs before I tag them, and we can predict when those eggs will hatch, and then with the map, figure out where they would have hatched. Wow, that's really cool. It's, I think it's cool. It is very cool, especially for me, like... We always try to figure out what the lobsters are doing from the surface and just by trapping patterns, but we, we, we think we know what we're doing, but in reality, nobody knows, nobody has a clue what those lobsters are doing down there. Um, exactly. Every year we get proven wrong, so it's cool to actually see some solid data from them. Well, I appreciate your time and appreciate you reaching out and helping me out with this. Yeah, thank you so much for this. It really helps us out, too. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll let you know if me or any of our friends or family end up getting another one or that one. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. All right, thanks. Since it's already tagged, I think we're going to give it a notch. We'll let it go. That way it stays in the ocean. We can get more information on it down the road from other fishermen that catch her. If we keep her now, that'll ruin the fun of the experiment. Of course, before we let her go, we're going to give her a snack.